And the next thing is comments. So like I said earlier, uh, it's better to use comments all the time, okay? Use comments at the beginning of your program as a courtesy to others and a way to document your own thinking so that anybody who reads your code, it's easier for them to understand what's happening in the program. And compiler ignores comments. Let's see an example. So example is, remember anything, any line that begins with a hash sign is a comment. So the first line is hash hash. First hash says that it's a comment, second hash is just there as a character, doing nothing. Next line, this line is to be a comment. What's written in this line is etc. etc. This program computes the volume of a six pack of soda. Next line. Next line, since it's going over, you say this line is also a comment. If you don't write this hash sign, you will get an error right here. So don't assume that if you've, you've written one hash, it will take care of all these two, three lines. Anything that you want not the compiler to work on or execute, put a hash before it. That line will not be executed by the compiler. Similarly, this hash sign does nothing. This hash sign says omit whatever comes after. So the first line the compiler reads is omit, 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 can volume. Okay, what is can volume? Can volume is a variable. And since it's written in all uppercase, we are saying that we are going to not change can, val can volume throughout this program. So its value is going to stay consistent at 0.355. Next line. Letters in a two letter bottle is what? Comment, so next, so this is a variable. Again, a constant, comment, variable. So you can see there are different ways uh, to write comments, right? I mean, not different way, but you write a comment before every variable telling yourself that what this thing is. So you write that in normal English. So when you close this program, come and open it after months and years, first you will know what the program does because of whatever you wrote up here. And then inside the program, anybody can see what each variable means. And then before each major calculation, you can write what you're doing, right? So by now you should be able to understand what's happening in this program. So what's happening? Define a variable, define a variable, define a variable, then what? And you're calculating, doing some calculation, what? Defining a new variable as some previous variables or their multiplication that is. What are these variables? Six times can volume is what? 0.355. So that value will be stored in total volume. Then what are you doing? Then you're printing something on the screen. What is that something? Anything that's inside the quotes is thrown as is. So a six pack of 12 ounce cans contains is printed on the screen. Next thing is total volume, which is what? Whatever value was stored here. So that will be printed and then will be printed letters. And if you copy paste this program and run it, you will see there are no spaces. It will read like a six pack of 12 ounce cans contains a joint value in decimal and then letters. If you want to put spaces, put a space here after contains and before letters. So do that and see what happens, right? And then in the other one, you change the value of total volume from this previous one plus the bottle value volume, which was defined to be two up here. So run this program and see what's how it's working and what comments do and so on, okay? 
This is just another way of writing. So you define something as constants, just like a commenting style, nothing different. The program does the same thing, okay?